Well, hello everybody. A couple years ago, I made a video about trash cans, redstone powered automatic flushing systems to get rid of all of your garbage. And I get a lot of questions about how do they work? How do I build it? That sort of thing. So I wanted to revisit the idea and show you how to build a redstone powered trash can so you can flush all of the garbage out of your automatic farms and that sort of thing. The way I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna start pretty basic and I'm gonna talk through some of the redstone how-tos and the redstone circuitry. Then I will show you the actual build and then we will go through a tutorial of how to build it. I put chapter markers so you can skip to whatever part you want and check it out. Okay, so we're gonna start at the beginning and I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how certain redstone components work. So you know what a dropper is, you know what a repeater is, you know what a redstone torch is, you know what a comparator is, and you know what a hopper is. And if you don't completely understand these different things, I'll leave a little card up in the corner so you can check out my Redstone Basics video, and I go into deep, deep detail of how a comparator, Redstone Torch, and repeater work. So I wanna talk about a couple of redstone mechanics we're gonna use in this build. One is the idea of a pulse extender. So normally when you push a button, you get a pulse and then it turns off. Pretty straightforward. But if you want that pulse to last a little bit longer, you can do something like this, which is called a pulse extender. This is a really simple one. It's just a couple of comparators facing in that direction, some dust, some comparators facing in this direction, some dust. And the way this works is a comparator takes whatever signal it gets and sends it on, and then sends it on again, and then it decays a little bit, sends it on, sends it on, decays a little bit. And so the signal does fade, but it takes much, much longer. And you'll notice when I push this button, we get a much longer pulse as a result. So another concept I wanna talk about real quick is the idea of powering hoppers. Hoppers normally just take an item from above and they send it on through. But if you send a redstone signal into a hopper, it locks it. So you can see here in this chest, we've got some items and they're just sitting there. And that's because this lever right here is on and it is powering this hopper. Now, if I was to turn this off, you'll see the items are starting to flow out of this chest and they're flowing down into this chest. And if I turn this back on, that will stop the process. So another important thing I wanna talk about real quick with droppers, and this may seem kind of obvious, but droppers need a break between each signal. So when I send it a signal, it'll drop an item, and then there's a break. Send it a signal, it drops an item, there's a break. But if I send it a signal, drops an item, but there's no break, this is still powering it, it can't drop anything else. So this signal has to stop for it to be able to drop the next thing. There needs to be an individual signal for each item that is dropped. So this here is a really simple automatic item flushing system. Right here, this dropper, when items end up in here, there is a comparator behind it that registers that, creates a signal, the repeater amplifies it, sends the signal around, this repeater pushes it into this block, which hits the dropper and causes it to spit an item out. So again, if there's stuff in the dropper, it shoots a signal around and causes it to spit something out. So what's going on on the other side here is the dropper has some items in it, and so the comparator measures that, sends a signal out, and the repeater amplifies that signal to a level of 15. And then it decays as it goes around. So it goes 15, 14, 13, 12. Now there's only a couple of items in the dropper at any given time. And so the level of redstone signal is pretty low. The way that a comparator works is it compares the signal coming in the back to the signal coming in the side. So if the signal in the back is the strong one, it lets it pass through. But if the signal coming in the side is the strong one, it turns the comparator off. And I can kind of show you what that looks like. So here you can see we've got a comparator and we've got a signal coming into the back of it and the comparator is reading that and passing it on. But let's say we've got a signal coming into the side, and let's say that signal is stronger. Now you can see the signal gets cut off because this signal is stronger than this signal. This is a signal of 15, 14, and this one is a signal of 15. So what's going on is 
the signal we're sending into the back of the comparator from the dropper is really small. There's only a couple of items in there, so it's not a very big signal. And then the comparator sends that into a repeater that amplifies it, sends it around into the side, and the comparator turns off. Now, since the comparator is turned off, it's not sending a signal anymore, which allows the dropper to turn it back on. The signal comes around, cuts off the signal. Since there's no signal coming around, turns itself off. So it's kind of an interesting little loop. If the comparator gets cut off, it can't send the signal into its own side again, and so it turns back on. And when you put a bunch of items in there, it happens really quickly. So this reads the signal, sends it out, goes into the side, turns it off, which causes this signal to turn it back on, and it happens over and over again. Now I want to change a couple of things just so you can see exactly how this is working. So let's say we didn't have this dust here. Let's say it was just this. What's going to happen is this will have stuff in it. This will register it, send the signal around, which will send a signal into this block, and it will dispense an item. So let's do that real quick. And there it went. There's stuff in here. We got the signal, put it into this block, and it dispensed an item. But like we had with the lever, this is not being powered over and over. It's just being powered once. So we just got one thing dispensed. We need this to turn on and off over and over again in order to get all this stuff out of here. And so again, if we take this signal back into the side, this guy is reading what's coming in from the back, what's coming in from the side. And every time it does that recalculation, it turns off. And then once it figures it out, it turns back on and sends the signal out. We'll do it one more time just so you can see it work. Now this sort of automatic item flushing system, there's different ways of doing this. This is actually exactly the same thing, but you can see this uses observers and a piston, and instead of a 3x4 footprint, it's a 3x3 three three footprint. This one is probably my favorite because it's easy to build and it's pretty inexpensive. But if you want a little bit smaller of a contraption, there are other ways to do it. This one, just like over here, we've got a dropper that's being measured by a comparator. The comparator pushes its signal along to the repeater, and the repeater is powering a piston. Here we have an observer, and we have another observer, and what will happen once there's a signal is this gets pushed out here, and these two see each other. So when this guy sees this guy, it's going to send a signal. And then when he sees that this guy sent the signal, he sends a signal. And then when he sees that they say, you get the idea. Just balances the signal back and forth, back and forth. One thing that's kind of cool with observers is the clock that they create is really fast. So I'll show you when I put stuff in here, it's going to come out very quickly. So these two are just staring at each other observing each other's signals. And as soon as this is empty and that signal disappears, this will get retracted. Super simple. Now this one, you get the click, click, click of the dropper. This one, you get the click, click, click of the dropper and you get a piston sound. So if you want something a little less noisy, this might be the way to go. If you want something with a little bit smaller of a footprint, this is a really cool way to do it too. So that brings us to the trash can. This here is the design I did in my other video for the automatic flushing trash can. And I have it laid out in such a way to make it a little easier to understand what the different components of this circuit are. So if we come back here, you'll recognize we have that automatic item flusher, just like we had over here. There is a hopper coming down into the dropper and it will bring items in there eventually. But right now we have that hopper locked. Like we were talking about, when there's a redstone signal next to a hopper, that locks it. So items will just stay in place and they won't drain through. Now the benefit here is if you have stuff in here, you can take it out, put it back. You have total control over what's going on here. And then when you decide to flush this stuff away, you can push a button and get rid of it. Now the button I have right here, but you could put the button wherever you want, and that would kind of rearrange these things to fit. It doesn't matter where these are exactly as long as they connect in this way. 
So what's going on here is we need to unlock this hopper to get these items to start flowing. This piston is extended because there is a torch underneath it. And if we were to push this button, it sends a signal into this block, which would invert the torch, retract the piston, and these items would start flowing down. As soon as they did, the dropper would be measured by the comparator, and we know how this goes. It just starts spitting items out. But we need this piston to stay retracted, because if it pushes this back, it's going to relock the hopper, and we're not going to get all of our items dispensed. So the way I did that is I took the signal out of this block, which is hitting the dropper, and I sent it this way back into the torch to keep it inverted. So the button kind of kickstarts the system, and then this system here keeps it powered. Now I put a little bit of a pulse extender here, like we talked about, because I want this pulse to stay on all the time. If this pulse extender wasn't here, the same way the comparator flashes on and off, on and off, this piston would also flash on and off, on and off, and that would really kind of mess with things. So by creating a pulse extender, that keeps a constant signal going into the torch, so this piston just stays retracted until everything is kind of done. So we've got a bunch of stuff in this chest. Let's go ahead and push this button and see how it goes. Piston gets retracted. The items are flowing down into the dropper, getting automatically dispensed. The signal is coming around. And when the signal goes in here, you can see how it's flashing on and flashing off. But these guys are keeping the pulse alive so we don't completely lose it and it keeps that torch inverted. As soon as we run out of items, this will stop being powered, this will fade out, and the torch will kick back on, extending the piston. And there you have it. Super simple. So the thing that's really cool about this is you could send a hopper into the back of this that's coming from a farm or something and just collect your stuff here Go through it, figure out what you want, hit the button, throw the rest away. This is a really cool way to sort of go through drops before they're automatically disposed of. Now, like we did over there, let's remove some stuff and see what happens. Let's get rid of the pulse extender and see what happens if that's not in place. So I'm gonna put some stuff in here and then I'm gonna push the button and we'll see what happens. Like I was saying, because that is getting hit over and over, it causes this to do some weird stuff. Now another thing that's important is this repeater here. Let's say instead of a repeater, we just had dust. So this is doing its thing. It's sending a signal into here, and that signal comes out. Well, this is being extended, so it's never going to go off. And we know how droppers respond to that. If they don't stop getting a signal, they won't dispense a new thing. They need to get a signal over and over. So if we put some stuff in the chest here and we set this off, you can see it breaks pretty quick. This guy is still doing its thing, but because this pulse is being extended, the dropper won't take another hit. It needs to turn off before it can dispense the next thing. By putting a repeater here, Repeaters force the signal to go in one direction, so this signal can't come back this way. And that way, the dropper is only getting hit by the pulse that turns on and off, on and off, rather than this extended pulse. Now again, what makes this system really cool is that the stuff just sits here in the chest until you decide to throw it away. When you hit the button, it automatically dispenses, and then it stops as soon as the chest is empty. But let's say you want something a little bit more automatic. You could do something like this. So let's say you had a mob farm and the mob farm is collecting all kinds of stuff. And let's say you want the bones, you want the gunpowder, but you don't want the rotten flesh. What you could do is you could set up a little item filter. So here I've got an item filter and this guy is looking for rotten flesh. And so as these items come out of the mob farm and drain across to our storage system, 
anytime there's rotten flesh, it's going to get pulled out and then set over to our automatic item dispensing system. And then, of course, this can go into lava or whatever you want to do. So if we get this flowing, we should start to get stuff over here. And as soon as we get through the bones, it's going to move on to the rotten flesh. And that should get filtered out. Like a charm. So if you don't care about going through your stuff, you can kind of skip that step and do something more like this, where it automatically filters out what you don't want. And that way you only get what you do. Now you could of course reverse this. Let's say you only want one thing out of the farm. Well instead you could put your storage system down here and you could put the disposal system up here. And that way it would only filter out the thing you wanted and throw everything else away. So you have some options here. This way you get everything except for the garbage. And like I said, if you flip these two around, you could just filter out one thing and throw the rest away. But back to the trash can. Let's talk about how to actually build this thing. So to build this thing, you're definitely going to need a button, a sticky piston, a block of redstone, a redstone torch, three comparators, three repeaters, and a dropper. You're also going to need some redstone dust, some solid blocks, and some hoppers. But as far as how many of those, it really depends on how you arrange your build. So let's say this is where we want to build our trash can. We have a chest here, and this chest might just be a chest that you throw your stuff into, or maybe there is a farm that is feeding into the back of this. So the first thing you want to do is from the bottom of your storage, you want to come down a couple of blocks, you want to do a hopper coming directly out, and then you want a dropper. And the dropper can face in any direction. It just depends on what direction you want to orient your system. I'm just going to face it in this direction, but you can do whatever you want. Now, the hardest part about all of this is getting it to fit without the different parts interacting with each other. You're going to have different signals kind of crisscrossing here and there. And if the components are too close together, sometimes the signals will interact and you don't want that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the automatic item dispensing system on this side. So I'm going to do nine blocks like that. So kind of a three by three. And then you need a block next to the dropper that is going to send the signal into the dropper. Now out of the back of the dropper, it's actually the side here, but the side that you're measuring, you're going to do the comparator and then out of the comparator, a repeater like that. And then this block you have sitting next to the dropper, you're going to send a repeater into it. And then you just bring your redstone dust around like that. And that is the entire automatic item flushing system. So that's super straightforward. Now I've got the dropper facing in this direction. So hypothetically, the items would end up going in here somewhere. And we could do lava, we could do a fire, uh, whatever you want to dispose of your items. Now another thing we need is that pulse extender and it needs to come off of this block here. So we're gonna come out like this and we're gonna go one, two, three, and then one, whoops, two, three. We're gonna take a repeater out of this block. That way the signal is only going in this direction we're going to put a comparator facing away from us, come around and a comparator facing the opposite direction. And you're just going to connect those up with some dust. And that is your pulse extender. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to lock this hopper. And I know that the block of redstone is going to end up sitting right there. So I'm going to do some temporary blocks here. That's the extension. That's where the piston will sit. So right there, I'm going to use that block to place the sticky piston. I'm going to get rid of that block. And then we know that the piston needs to be powered by a torch. So I'm going to put a block like that, and then we're going to put the torch right under it. The torch is far enough away from this stuff that we shouldn't get any interaction. That's great. If we would have put the piston, let's say, over on this side, you know, extending, then it's possible that the torch would have gotten too close to this stuff, and then we'd have some trouble. 
But since the torch is all the way out here, that's no problem. Now somewhere on the front, we're going to need a button. And I'm just gonna put it right there. That feels like a good spot for a button. Around back, I'm just gonna put a temporary button so I know where the signal is coming out. And somehow we need to get that signal down to this torch. So let's see, this dust will come like that. And then we'll bring it up again. Up again, and then straight across. All right, so if I take the dust and bring it on down, it should go right into the back of the torch. There we go. And then we need to connect the pulse extender to this dust so that that torch stays off. Because if we don't, it's going to flash on and off, on and off, and we don't want that. And one thing to be mindful of is this dust is pointing into this block, and that is what is turning off the torch. If I was to bring the dust across here, you're gonna notice this isn't pointing into this block anymore and that won't work. So we need to come back a little bit. This should work, there we go. Yep, everybody's happy now. And that should be a complete system. So again, we've got the automatic item flushing system. We've got the piston that is locking the hopper and the torch that is extending the piston. We've got a signal coming down from the button to interact with the torch and a pulse extender to keep that signal on. If we run around to the front and throw some stuff in here, it should just sit in there. Perfect. And I can revisit it, take stuff out, put stuff back. And whenever I wanna flush it, I should just be able to hit the button. Oh, one adjustment I had to make. This is kind of the trial and error of redstone like I was talking about. I had the redstone dust coming out this way and down, but this dust here was powering the piston, so it would never retract. So if we reroute it just a little bit, like so, bring it down and then around that way, this guy is only getting powered by the torch and then we don't have any interference. So again, if I put my items in here, I can revisit it, take them out, put them back, whatever I want. And whenever I want to flush it, push that, and they just automatically flush. So as you can kind of see, there's not a single way to build a thing. You can kind of fit a contraption into whatever area you need to, as long as you understand the rules of redstone and the mechanics. Basically, this is three different circuits. We have an automatic item flushing system, we've got a pulse extender, and we have a button and a piston that are interacting. And that's it, that's the whole thing. The trick is just getting them to fit together in this little space that you have behind the walls and under the floors. And you know we can face things in different directions. We can kind of stack things in different ways as long as we aren't crossing our signals and as long as all of the proper things are connected, it'll work. See, like as far as the piston being here, I tried it out on the side this way, but it got too close to this redstone, and when I put the torch nearby, it would power all of this. So that didn't work. This was the best place for me to put the piston. But like, let's say I wanted the dropper to face in this direction. You know, now what? Well, you know, we could just move this over. That's not a huge deal. And we know we need to measure off of that, and we need to have a block next to it to power it like so put our comparator here a repeater there and put our repeater there dust all the way around great and then that pulse extender well we know it needs to come off of this block so we could just come on down like that. Then if we take our repeater out of here, boop. So now we've moved things around a little bit. Instead of this being all the way out here, and instead of our dropper facing in that direction, now our dropper's facing in this direction. It's all the same circuits. It's all connected the same but we just reoriented it a little bit. And hypothetically, if I put a bunch of stuff in here, it should just sit there until I push the button and it still works. 
So as far as the trash can goes, I hope that's helpful. And as far as redstone goes, I hope this inspires you to try some stuff out, do a little problem solving, a little playing, get creative with it. Once you learn what the different blocks and the different components do, and then you learn a couple of circuits, you can really solve whatever problem you want with redstone. It's pretty awesome to have some of those things in your vocabulary. And once you start trying things out and kind of suss it out and figure out how the different things interact, it's very, very fun. And that's where I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Please like and subscribe if you wanna follow along on the adventure. And I hope to see y'all in the next one. Bye bye